Hello, I'm Minister Sharon Brumfield and welcome to Let's Chat, where we transform our beliefs, our behaviors, and the way we see barriers. This week's episode is loving ourselves beyond our hair. Our hair is a big deal. It's our crown of glory. It's what we spend time in the mirror. We spend hours in the salon getting it styled and we wear wigs, we wear weave, we do so many different styles with our hair because it's the thing that people see on the outside of us. Well, I wanna introduce you to Dr. Chalet. She's gonna tell her story of her diagnosis of alopecia, how she had to transform who she was beyond her hair. Who are you if you have no hair? Who are you? Are you still valuable? Are you still worthy? Are you still pretty? Are you still beautiful? Do you still matter? Take a moment to listen to her story and reflect on, can we love ourselves beyond our hair? Hi, my name is Dr. Shalay Williams, and I typically go by Dr. S. I'm an associate professor at a university here locally in St. Louis, Missouri, and I'm also the founder and CEO of About Face Collaborative, LLC. I have been tasked with sharing about my hair journey and loving myself beyond my hair. And as I prepared for this opportunity to make this video, I realized that like many of us, we don't really miss something until we don't have it. We don't realize how important it is to us until we no longer have access to it. And that was very much um, the process for me and um, my hair journey and loving myself beyond my hair. Like many of us, I grew up um, with lots of hair, long, thick, pretty hair. I've had jerry curls, relaxers, braids, natural hair, weaves, the works, short hair, long hair, and all throughout that process, um, I, I guess I prided myself in the fact that not only did I have hair, but I had the choice and the options to wear my hair in the way that I wanted. It wasn't until um, the early 2000s when I really began to notice that I had a patch of hair um, missing. It was maybe about a quarter size hair on this side here. And um, it was worrisome enough that I went to go see a dermatologist and I was diagnosed with alopecia. Unfortunately, at the time, I did not understand um, the significance of having alopecia, the long-term um, effects of that. And so I really didn't take it very seriously because I still had hair. Years progressed um, until 2010 when I had my son and I ended up having an epidural. And again, being... Um, unknowledgeable in this area. I did not realize that um, for some women having an epidural can increase the chances of hair loss. And so after um, giving birth to my son, dealing with the typical postpartum shedding, which I also wasn't familiar with, on top of having the epidural, on top of already having alopecia, I started to lose my hair um, at a very rapid rate. I got more ball spots um, on my head. The hair in the front of my head started to thin. And I probably would have made the decision very early on to cut my hair or to shave my head. Um, but I was also a part of um, a ministry organization that did not believe in cutting hair, did not believe in women cutting their hair. So in addition to just kind of what I felt like was a personal representation of beauty, right? Women have long hair um, or at least have hair um, as well as external forces, social media, TV, um, television, um, magazines, those kind of things. And um, this pressure that I heard from this other organization, I really put a lot of weight into my hair and what it represented as far as, far as who I am as a person, who I am as a woman, and even who I am as a Christian. So again, time goes on and finally in 2020, right, when we're like in the middle of the COVID pandemic, um, I just went through a lot of personal transformation. Um, and as a part of that, I realized that I was dealing with 
a lot of trauma related to things. And I had not associated that trauma at all um, with my hair or hair loss. And I realized as I was thinking about how do I get to a place of healing? How do I get a place of loving all of me, all of my past experiences, all of what I'm going through in this moment? What do I need to accept and what do I need to get rid of? And one of the things that I needed to accept was the fact that I did have alopecia, that I did have hair loss, that it was progressing. And while for some people there are um, medical options, there are natural options, for me, those things did not work. And rather than keep trying things and trying things and trying things to maintain a sense of beauty that no longer represented me, I accepted the fact that this was who I am. I am a woman who is diagnosed with alopecia. And instead of avoiding the hair loss, masking the hair loss um, with wigs and braids and um, cover all ups and you know head wraps and all of those things are great and good. And I would still wear them, but because I want to versus trying to hide something. I also realized that I needed to accept the fact that I am beautiful with and without hair. And having this conversation with someone else, I noted that rather than looking at hair like a necessity, I view it as an accessory. In the same way that I would wear earrings or rings or a watch or, or whatever the case may be to supplement um, me, to enhance me in the same way I view hair like that. Hair is not, for me, an essential part of who I am any longer. Um, and so now as I have accepted who I am and it fully embraced it, and I, I just want to share that when I made the decision um, to go ball, it was in a progression. It was um, a transition. I started with shaving half my head and wore that hairstyle for a while, a few months. And even in that, I felt like, um, like okay, I'm on my way. I'm, I'm almost there. Um, but I didn't feel like I was fully at acceptance. And so in October of last year, in fact, I made the decision to go fully ball um, and I had braids at the time, cut the braids out, use clippers, shaved my head and the release and the relief that I felt in that moment is basically indescribable. I cannot um, tell you the weight that was lifted off of my shoulders at that point. It was like shaving my head and accepting me for who I am at this season in my life. It was just such a great place to be. It was such a great place to be. It symbolized getting rid of internalized and external perceptions of what beauty is what I should look like, what a Black woman should look like, what a Christian woman should look like. There were lots of, lots of layers um, to that process and to that freedom. Um, and it was in that moment that I felt like I could say, I love me. I am beautiful. I am worthy. I am loved. Like all, all of these affirmations. I am all of those things separate from my hair. My hair did not make me more loved. My hair did not make me more Christian. My hair did not make me more beautiful. It was an accessory. And so I'm just really grateful, honestly, to God um, for the opportunity to go through this progression, go through this transition, go through this transformation of understanding um, who and what I am to him um, and in him. And I now strongly encourage women when I am out with what I call my hashtag BBH, beautiful bald head, um, and women and men, but women especially will, you know, pull me to the side. Can I talk to you? Can I ask you a question? And usually it's about alopecia. I have been asked if I um, have ever had cancer and, and fortunately I have not, but even women in that situation, have had conversations with me, and we've talked about how um, 
It is embarrassing to lose hair. It is em embarrassing to have bald spots and how we feel compelled, again, both internally and from these external, sometimes quiet messages and sometimes very alert messages that having hair as a woman, having hair is vitally important. And so it's just really um, a blessing to be able to have conversations with women to help them start their journey and their progress and their process of loving themselves beyond their hair. And whatever that looks like, maybe it's not a ball head, maybe it's only a shaven head, maybe it's a ball head, but you still wear wigs or, or whatever the case may be but just understanding that you are okay. I am okay, separate from my hair. And so I just wanted to share that um, little bit of my testimony of how I got to the place of loving myself um, beyond my hair. I will again, just reiterate how freeing it has been, how much of a blessing it has been for me it wasn't a cakewalk. Um, it wasn't easy. It was definitely some wrestling within myself um, to come to terms with that. One, the diagnosis of having alopecia, you know, two, losing hair, but then three, understanding that I am loved, beautiful, precious, all of those great things, valuable, separate from my hair. Um, so thank you for listening as I shared this journey. Um, and I look forward to talking to you soon as I always close out on any of the things that I do. Be blessed, Dr. S.